Hey everyone, welcome. Today we're working on the backtracking problems from the Unicode roadmap. So backtracking problems all kind of follow the same idea in that we try different elements and if that works, we should add that to our answer. And if it doesn't work, we're going to pop it out and try a different one. So let's start with the first question, subsets. So in subsets, we're given an array nums of unique elements and we want to return all possible subsets, which is the power set. And the solution set must not contain any duplicate subsets, and we can return the solution in any order. So in this question, we can follow that backtracking formula that I just said. By trying all the numbers, for example, we try 1 to be the first element, then we can try 2, and then we can try 3. So until something works. In this case, any subset works. So 1 could be our answer, then we can try 1, 2 or 1, 2, 3, and if we don't use 1, then we can try 2, 2, 3. If we don't use 2, then we can try 3. So in the end, that generates all the possible subsets or the power set. So let's put that into code right here. So create our answer. We have a lot of different answers, so we create answer as an array. And we can use a stack equals dq to keep track of what we have currently, or what if we have tried currently. So let's create our backtracking function here, def backtrack. And what we need is an index. So index end. The index represents which element, up to which element we've tried in our nums array. So for example, if end is zero, that means we haven't tried any element. If end is one, that means we've tried one, so we can try from two and onwards. So because any possible combination is a valid subset, we should just have our answer append stack cast into a list. Sorry, stack. So after that, we should try all the remaining elements. So for example, if end was one, we should try elements from one and onwards. So for i in range, starting from end all the way to the last number in nums, so len nums, let's try adding the, the index at int, so stack.append nums i. So now we can call backtrack with this newly appended element that we're trying, backtrack. And we're calling backtrack on i plus one because we don't want any duplicate elements. If we do i, then we're gonna repeat this element at index i. After that, either we got results from the backtracking function or it doesn't work. Anyways, we don't need this element anymore, so we can pop it from the stack and try another element. So stack.pop. So we can call this backtracking function, backtrack, starting from index zero because everything is untried. And this backtracking function will populate our answer for us. So after that, we can just return answer. Return ans. Nice. So in this question, we're following the backtracking formula, basically trying all the elements because we were returning the subsets. Anything is a subset, so we add that to our answer. Then we pop out the element we tried, and then we try start trying the next element. And repeat that for all the elements that we haven't tried yet. So moving on to the next question, combination sum. So we're given an array of distinct integers candidates and a target integer target. So we want to return a list of all unique combinations of candidates where the chosen numbers sum to target. And we can return the combinations in any order. So the same number may be chosen from candidates an unlimited number of times. So unlike the previous question, we can actually use a candidate more than one time. So two combinations are unique if the frequency of at least one of the chosen elements is different. So. Uh, test cases are generated so that we have unique combinations that sum to target. Okay, cool. So in this question, example one, candidates are two, three, six, seven, target is seven. So there's two different ways we can do it. We can have two twice, which is four plus three is seven, or we can just use seven. So in example two here, target is eight, we can do two four times, which is eight, or two one time, two threes, or three plus five. In example three here, this doesn't work at all because candidate is greater than target. We can't get our target. So we can use a very similar approach to the last question. Basically, we're trying every candidate, except in this case, we make sure to not do i plus one here. Instead, we should do backtracking on i. 
That way we can use the candidate more than one time. So let's create our answer array just like before and our stack for storing what we've tried so far. So def backtrack and we can pass in our index just like the last question and also the target. So target instead of being the actual target, let's call this goal. So we want the goal to be zero. And every time we add a new number to try, we're going to subtract the goal by that number. So if goal equals to zero, that means we've reached our goal. We got a group of numbers that add up to the target. So goal is zero. So we can add that to our answer as dot append list stack. And we can return because all the candidates here are positive. So once we reach goal, adding more numbers is only going to make it greater than target. So that's never going to be the case. And if goal is less than zero, sorry, uh, return. Because once we've gone too far, there's no way to come back because all candidates are positive. So just like the previous question, we should start from the index end and try all the remaining ones that we haven't touched yet. So for i in range index and all the way to the end of candidates. So we can add it to our stack here. So basically we're trying candidates i, so stack.append candidates i. And we're calling backtrack now. On the index i, we don't need to do i plus one because we can use this index more than once. And remember to do goal minus and it's at i because goal should decrease by this amount. So after that, we're done with this backtracking function. We don't need this element anymore. We should pop it from the stack, stack.pop. And now just like the previous question, we can call backtrack starting from zero because we haven't used any elements yet. And our goal initially is going to be target. And this backtracking function will populate answer for us so we can return answer. Let's try running that. Forgot an S here. Nice. So this question is very similar in code structure to the previous question. Basically, we're just trying all the numbers in candidates except the differences here is that we have to keep track of goal whenever goal is zero only then we add it to our answer and also in this case we can use a index more than once so we don't have to do i plus one here so moving on to the next question permutations so given an array nums of distinct integers return all the possible permutations and we can return the answer in any order so here permutations are different ways we can arrange numbers so one, two, three, we can arrange it three factorial ways. So that's going to be six different ways. So if there's two numbers, that's two factorial, which is two. If there's one number, there's only one way to arrange it. And we don't have to worry about duplicate numbers because an array of distinct integers, the question specifies they're distinct. So in this question, like the previous two, we can try numbers to have it start off the Permutation. So we can try permutation starting with one, then try one starting with two, then try one starting with three, and so on. So after, for example, if we're trying the ones that start with one, then we have a smaller permutation, two and three, and there's two ways to arrange that. So we can try two first and then try three first to get these ones that start with a one. So let's write the code. It's going to be very similar in code structure to the previous two questions. So answer equals to an empty array and we can define our backtracking function. So def backtrack, we need to store, what do we need to store here? We need to store the current numbers that we have in our permutation and also the numbers that remain to be used. So let's call that cur and remain. And let's try calling it so it makes more sense. So backtrack, Initially, we have no numbers in our permutation, and all numbers are, that are remaining are in nums. Cool. So if len remain, basically, if we used all the numbers, there's nothing left in remaining. So if len remain equals to zero, that means this is a valid permutation that uses all the numbers, and we want to add that to our answer. So ans.append cur, which is the complete permutation. 
and we can return from there. If we haven't reached the, uh, the end, that means there's still numbers in remaining. So for i in range land remain, let's try all the numbers in remain to see which one goes first. So we'll go in order to see which one goes first. And let's call backtrack. So we want to add the number at index i. So remain i to our current permutation. And we're going to cast this to a list first to do list concatenation in Python. And we want to remain, remove this element at index i from remain. So a simple way to do that is to use list slices. So basically remain from 0 all the way to i. Remember, this i is not inclusive. Plus remain i plus 1 all the way to the end. So this is the two sub uh, lists starting from 0 all the way to the element before the index i and from the element after index i to the end. So together, this is the remain list without index i, without the element at index i. So after that, we call backtracking and we can just return answer because backtrack will populate our answer for us. So let's return answer. So this question is quite similar to the previous questions, except this case we're not using a stack to track because we never want to pop from different permutations because permutations always take all the numbers. So instead we use a list called cur, basically the elements that we've accumulated so far, and we try different elements from the elements that are remaining to add to this current one. And we'll try all the orders to make sure we get all the permutations. So moving on to the next question, So subsets two, we're given an array integers nums that may contain duplicates and we want to return all possible subsets or the power sets. So the solution set must not contain any duplicate subsets and we can return that in any order. So here in example one, nums is one, two, two. We can have nothing, one, one, two, one, two, 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 or two, two. So notice how if we use the first one and the second two and and the first one and the first two, we're both going to get one, two. But there's only one instance of the list one, two in our output because we don't want any duplicates. So this is a similar question to the first question, subsets, except in this case, we don't want any duplicates. And if we use the same approach as the first question, we're going to get duplicates because there's two one twos. So how do we avoid having duplicates in our output? Well, we need to see and devise a strategy to deal with duplicate numbers in the input. So for duplicate numbers, let's say we always use the first instance of it. So for example, we have the one, and then we're going to use the first instance of two to get the output one, two. We're not going to use the second instance of the two if we're already using the first instance of it. This way we avoid all the duplicates, but we also keep the fact that we can use have one, two, two, because we're using this one two is already in our stack and then we're using the first instance of the remaining two so we can still have the output one two two so another problem is that we need to group all the numbers that are the same together so an easy way to do that is to sort the numbers so that they're in ascending order and all the duplicates are together so every time we do a for loop on the numbers that we haven't tried yet if the number is the same as the previous number then we don't want to try it, so we'll skip that one. So let's put all of that into code, starting off with nums.sort. To group all of the duplicate numbers together, now we can create the setups with our answer as a empty list and stack as a DQ, just like before. So now we can define our backtracking function, define backtrack, taking in an index, and because every subset is viable, we don't have to check any exit condition, so we can just do ands.append list stack. So for the remaining numbers, so we're going to try them starting from end all the way to the end. So for i in range end land nums, just like before. So if i is greater than the index, so basically we're making sure we always try the first number in, at index end 
and if it's a number that's not the first number and nums i equals to the previous number so for example the second two in this case nums i minus one we don't want to try it so we're going to continue to skip it so now we can add what numbers we want to our stack so stack dot append nums i we can call backtracking with this new stack so backtrack i plus one and pop it after we're done so stack dot pop that should be it for the backtracking function. We can call backtrack to populate our answer. So backtrack, and we start with index zero to include all the numbers, and we can return our answer after that because it's populated by backtrack. So return answer. Nice. So this question is a similar approach to the first subset question, except there's a modification where we have to sort the numbers to group all of the similar, or sorry, the identical duplicate terms together and we make sure that whenever there's duplicate terms in the list that we're still trying, we make sure to skip those and we only use the first instance of it. So moving on to the next question, combination sum two. So given a collection of candidate numbers candidates and a target number target, find all the unique combinations in candidates where the candidate numbers sum to target. So very similar to combination sum, except again, we can have duplicate numbers in candidates. So for example, here we have two ones. And the solution set must not complain any, complain, contain any duplicate combinations. So, we, so a duplicate potentially is the one, two, five, because we can use the first one, the two and the five, or the second one, the two and the five. So if we use the same approach as the second question, combination sum, we're going to get that duplicate. So to avoid the duplicate, we can do a similar approach to subsets two, where first we sort the numbers. After sorting the numbers, we make sure that we're always using the first instance of it. And if it's the second instance of it, we just try it. Sorry, we just skip it because we've already tried the first instance. So let's do a similar approach and put that into code. So candidates dot sort. So we group all the duplicate numbers together, set up our answer, and set up our stack. So define our backtracking function, starting with index, and we also need to pass in a goal, just like combination, combination sum one. So if goal equals to zero, because we're subtracting the target by the candidate, so whenever goal reaches zero, that means we've reached our goal, or we've had enough candidates that add up to target. So ands.append list stack, so we add this to our answer, and we can return. Because all the candidates here are they're positive, so if we add any more, goal is going to go negative. And if goal already went negative, we're going to return because adding more candidates will make it more negative and we won't be able to reach zero. So here for i in range starting from index end all the way to the land of candidates, this is the numbers that we haven't tried yet. So if i is greater than n, again we don't want to skip the first one, and candidates i equals to candidates i minus 1. So if we've tried this number already, we don't want to try it again, so we can continue to skip this. So if we're not skipping it, then we want to push it to our stack. So stack.pend candidates at index i. And we can call backtrack with this new stack. So i plus 1. And we added candidates, so goal should subtract candidates. So goal is closer to zero now, so goal minus can did at index i, and after we're done backtracking, we can pop it from the stack. So stack not pop. Now we can call the backtracking function backtrack to populate our answer, so backtrack zero, starting from zero, and our goal is going to be target. So this should populate the answer for us, so we can just return, oh, should be return answer. So let's try running that. So this question is a modification to combination sum, similarly to how we modified subsets to subsets two. Now we're modifying combination sum. The idea is still to sort the combinations, sorry, the candidates to group the identical candidates together. And whenever we've seen a candidate that we've tried before inside of this for loop, we're gonna wanna skip it to avoid duplicates in our output. So moving on to the next question, word search. So we're given an m by n grid of characters. 
board and a string word. So we want to return true if word exists in the grid or return false if it doesn't. So we've done a similar question in tries before, which was actually harder, where we had to search for multiple words. Now we're searching for a single word. So in example one here, we're searching for the word A, B, C, C, E, D, and we have it. All the characters have to be horizontally or vertically adjacent, and we can't use any character more than once. Example two, we're searching for C, we have S, C, E right here. And in example three, we're searching for A, B, C, B. So note that we have A, B, C, but we can't move back to this B because we've already used this B once. So we don't want any repeated cells being used more than once in a word. So there actually isn't an instance of A, B, C, B in this example. So to do this, we're going to call create a depth research function, basically a backtracking idea. So depth BFS, and we're going to search through the entire grid to search for words. And at every in instance of the DFS, we have a character to search for. So the first instance, we're going to search for the first character, then we're searching for the second character, if we found this first character, and so on and so forth. So we need to pass in the board, the row we're searching, the column we're searching, and the index. So the index is the index of the word, which gets us which character we're looking for. And when calling this DFS function, we're going to use a for loop to st because the word can start from any character or any cell in this grid. So for i in range len board, for j in range len board zero. Oh, I spelled this wrong. Range. So if board at index i, index j equals to board zero. So we only want to DFS it if this cell actually starts with the first character in the word. So we only want to DFS it if it's an A in this case. So and DFS, so we'll say DFS returns a Boolean, true or false. If it's true, then we found the word. So if and DFS board i j, and we're searching from index zero. So if we found it, then we want to return true to our function. Otherwise, we ser searched every single grid to be the starting spot. We didn't find any, so we return false. So in this DFS function, we want to see if we've found the end of the word. So if index equals to the last character, then word minus one, return true, because there's no more characters for us to search. So now we want to store the letter in each grid or each cell. And then we want to set it to a character that isn't part of any word. This is to avoid having the word repeat. So for example, A, B, C, we can't repeat this B again to form A, B, C, B. So after we see this B, we want to set it to something like an underscore so that this C will never think the cell is a B and come back. This is to avoid using the same cell more than once. So let's store that in a variable called letter. So letter equals board at row at column. And we can set this row column to be something like underscore, because underscore is not part of any word. Remember, after we're done, we can backtrack. We want to store, re restore board RC to be equal to letter, so that other instances of the DFS function will still see the cell as a B. So now we need all the directions. So directions equals to negative one zero, negative one zero is going up one row or it can go down one row. So one comma zero, zero comma negative one, this is going left one and this is going right one. So this directions is the left, right, up, down to find the vertically and horizontally adjacent cells to a cell. So for DRDC, DRDC is the change. So DRDC in directions, directions, dr plus equals to r, dc plus equals to c to get the new row and the new column. So now we have the new row and the new column for the four neighbors. We want to make sure that the four neighbors are actually inside the grid. So let's do an if statement here. So if zero is less than equal to dr is less than equal to len board, and zero is less than equal to dc is less than equal to len board zero. So we're making sure the column is in the number of columns, the row is in the number of rows, and board, and board, dr, dc, so new row, new column, 
actually equals to the word at the next index we're looking for. So if it does, we're going to want it to DFS and search that one. So if DFS, because DFS returns a Boolean, we can call if DFS. So if DFS is true, that means we found it. So DFS takes in board, new row, new column, and index plus one to search for the next index in the string. So if we found it, we can return true. That represents we've actually found the word. And if we searched all the directions and haven't been able to find anything, then we want to return false. So here, return false. So let's try running this. Cool, let's submit it. So we've done a similar question before in the tries or word search too where we're searching for multiple words. This question is a simpler case where we don't have to use a try because we're only keeping track of one word. So instead of a try node, we're just passing in the index and we're doing the, basically the same idea, searching the top, left, bottom, and right, basically all the neighbors to see if we can find the next letter. And if we do, we DFS on the next letter. So moving on to the next question. So palindrome partitioning. We're given a string s and we want to partition s so that every substring of the partition is a palindrome and in the end return all the possible palindrome partitionings of s so in example one here we're given the string a a b there's two different partitions one is to split it by every character so a a b because every character itself is a palindrome alternatively we can take the two a's together because two a's also form a palindrome and b itself is a palindrome so in example two here, we only have the character A, so the result is just the character A. So this question is a backtracking problem because at each instance, for example, we're starting from the index zero here, we can try taking A and then finding the remainder of the palindrome partitionings for the remaining two characters like A and B, or we can take the first two characters, A, A, and finding the remaining palindrome partitions and then concatenating them. So we need a helper function to help us determine what a palindrome is, and we need to iterate through all the possible indices to create substrings that are palindromes and concatenate the rest of them after we're done taking this palindrome out of the string. So like other backtracking questions, we can start off by creating our answer, which is an empty list, and a stack, which is a DQ. So we're going to define our backtracking function to take in an index in so dev backtrack. So how do we know when we're done? Well, the index equals to the length of the string. That means we've reached the end. So if index equals to line s, that means we reached the end of the string and we have a valid palindrome partitioning. So with that, we can add that to our answer. So ands.append is stack. And we can return because there's no more characters to be added. So now for i in range, starting from the index end, so we don't use any prior characters, all the way to the end of the string, we want to create a substring starting from index end all the way to the end. So the substring is going to be s sliced from index all the way to i plus 1. We're doing i plus 1 instead of i, just so we don't have the empty string, because the empty string is always going to be a palindrome, but we don't want to include that in our answer. In our answer, we need strings of at least length 1. So we created our substring, so we should test if the string is a palindrome. So if is palindrome substring, we can code this helper function is palindrome later. So if this is a palindrome, what we want to do is we want to add it to our stack. So stack dot append our substring. After that, we can call backtracking. So backtrack on i plus 1, because remember, we cut substring off at i plus 1. This is non-inclusive, so we can start the next search starting from index i plus 1. After we're done with this backtracking, we can pop that from the stack and do the next one. So stack dot pop. And to use this backtracking function, we want to start from index 0 to include the whole string. So backtrack from index 0 and return answer. But remember, we have to code our is palindrome function. So we've done this in the two pointer sections. So this is a pretty simple exercise. So def is palindrome, where we pass in is our substring. So s substring here. We can create two pointers, one from the start and one from the end. So ij equals to 0 and length of the substring minus 1, so we're inside the string, while i is less than j, 
we want to check if the start and end are the same. So if substring at i is not equal to substring at j, we can immediately exit, so return false. Otherwise, increment i by 1 and decrement j by 1. So if we're done, i met j, we can return true. Let's try running that. Nice. So this question is similar to the previous questions with subsets and combination sums, except this time we're given a string instead of an array of numbers, and we have to choose how far from the string to partition. And every time we partition, we have to do a check that that partition is actually a palindrome. Once we're done, we can add that to the stack and call backtracking on the remainder of the string. So moving on to the next question, letter combinations of a phone number. So given a string containing the digits from 2 to 9 inclusive, we want to return all possible combinations that the number could represent, and we want to return the answer in any order. So a mapping of digits to letters, just like on the telephone buttons, is given below. So 1 doesn't map to any letters. So we're given the digits, for example, 2, 3 here. 2 could mean anything in A, B, or C. So we see that the output always starts with A, B, or C. Now, 3 could mean anything in D, E, F, so the output always ends in D, E, F. So there's nine cases here, and we want to do this for every digit. So the length of digits is always equal to the length of output. Okay, so again, this is a backtracking problem because for every digit, we're going to try its options listed on this telephone button. For example, if we're given two, we're going to try the letters A, B, C, and then after trying them, we can pop it out, and for example, we try A, then we pop A out, then try B, then try C, and so on. So this question, we're going to need to create a map to store every digit to all of its letter possibilities. So that's going to take a while. So let's set up our question just like all the other backtracking questions. So answer equals to an empty list and stack equals a DQ. So let's define our backtracking function. Backtrack, it again takes an index end, so we don't use any repeated characters. So if end equals to length of digits, that means we've reached the end because the length of the output is always the length of digits. So if we reach that, then result equals to we want to store it in a we want to store our stack answer in a stack, and then we want to join the stack to become a string and then put that in the output. So what we're going to do here is result equals to nothing.join. So this joins a list into a string. And then we want to cast our stack into a list. So it looks something like this. So the empty string dot join a list of the stack. So if result, we want to make sure that, for example, in example two here, we don't want to return anything. So if result is not equal to the empty string, then we want to add it to our answer. So ands.append result. And after that, we can just call return. Oh, whoops, it should be in the if here. Because int reached the length of digits, we don't have any more digits to look for. So after that, this is our end condition. We can try all the options. So for option in letters, we're going to create this letters map later. So letters of end. It should be digits at end. So basically, we're getting the digit that we're looking at right now and then getting the possible letters from this digit. So stack uh, append this option. And we want, can call backtrack with this new stack. So backtrack index plus one and stack dot pop once we're done with that. Now we can do backtrack from index zero just like before index zero, so we include the entire string and return our answer because backtrack populates our answer for us, so return ants. Now we need to define this letters map. So letters equals to a dictionary where two maps to a list of, it could be A or B or C. So this is gonna take a while. So three can map to D, E, F. So four, four can map to G, H, or J. Uh, oh, G, H, or I. Five can map to J, K, 
pull it out. Six can map to M, oops, N or O. Where do I have this? Seven can map to P, Q, R, or S. Eight can map can map to T, U, or V, and nine can map to W, X, Y, Z. So finally, W, X, Y, Z. So finally, let's try running this. Nice, that's accepted. So basically, this is, again, a backtracking question because we're trying all the possibilities at every index. So basically, looking at the number here, for example, if it's 2, we try A, B, or C. Then moving on to the next index, we try D, E, or F, and so on. So moving on to the next question, n queens. So the n queens puzzle is the problem of placing n queens on an n by n chessboard so that no two queens attack each other. So given an integer n, return all distinct solutions to the n queens puzzle. And you can return the answer in any order. So each solution contains a distinct board configuration of the n queens placement, where q and the dots indicate a queen and an empty space, respectively. So in example one here, there's two different possibilities for the n queens placements. Output one here is, so we're outputting each row as a string and returning each board as n, or in this case, four strings. Okay, so this again is a backtracking question. So for queens to attack each other, they have to be in the same row, same column, or same diagonal. So we need to make sure that no two queens are ever in the same row, same column, same diagonal. And we can approach this backtracking question by trying to place a queen somewhere in each row and then moving on to the next row to see where we can place the queen. For example, in example one here, we can't place the second row queen in this grid, this grid, or this grid. So the only option is this rightmost grid. And then we move on to the third row, and we move on to the fourth row, and so on. So we're going to go down the board row by row to check where we can place the queen. And also, we need to eliminate the rows, columns, and positive and negative diagonals that this queen covers. So we can create, first let's create our answer. It's going to be a list and let's define our backtracking question. So define backtrack. So we need to pass in a board. We need to pass in the row that we're currently looking to place our queen in because we're going down row by row. So this is the row. And then we also need to store sets of where we have queens. So for example, if a queen is in the row one set, then we can't have a queen in that one. If a queen is in the column one set, we can't have a queen in that column. So we don't actually need to check store the rows, we just need to store the columns because we're going down each row, so we're never repeating any queens and any rows. So calls, pause, diag. So positive diagonals are the ones going up. So imagine a line, it has a positive slope, so it's a diagonal that is going from the bottom left to the top right. And a negative diagonal is the opposite of that. So if len rows, or if we have, uh, if len columns, so for example, if we filled columns, that means every column has a queen. So if len columns equals to n, that means we have n queens on the board, and that means we're done. So we can add that to our answer. So result, we can create our result equals to, we're storing this in a 2D grid. So to cast the 2D grid into a string, we need to join it first. So empty string dot join every row for row in board. And we can add that to our answer. So ants dot append our result. So this is basically join for every row. We're using every row is an array of dots and queens and queues. So we're joining them into a string and then we're concatenating that into a list. So that forms a possible output, something like this in our output, in our answer. And once we have that, we can return. So now in this row we're looking at, for example, the first row, 
we can try every column to see if we can put the queen there. So for c in range len board 0, this is the columns. Or this is the same as n, but it doesn't matter. So we have to create the positive and negative diagonals. So for the positive diagonal, it's pretty simple. The positive diagonal equals to the row plus the column. Because for example here, this is the first this is the first row and the first column. So the diagonal, this diagonal is going to be diagonal zero. This is going to be diagonal one because the row plus the column is one. This is going to be diagonal two, diagonal three, diagonal four, and so on. So to uniquely identify the negative diagonals, it's going to be row minus column. Because this, the main negative diagonal is going to be diagonal zero because the row equals to the column. Anything under that, there's the row is greater, so it's going to be positive one diag negative diagonal, positive two negative diagonal, positive three negative diagonal. And on the other side, this is the negative one diagonal, negative two diagonal, and negative three diagonal. That's why negative diagonals are uniquely identified by row minus column. So now we need to check that the row and column and diagonals are not in what we have already. So they don't attack any other queens that we already placed on the board. So if r not in rows and c not in columns and positive is not in positive diagonals and negative is not in negative diagonals, that's a very long if statement. So if all of these are true, that means we haven't have had any collisions and we can put this queen here. So board row column equals to a queen instead of a dot. And we can call backtrack on this. So backtrack with this new board. And we're going to increase the row by one so we can start putting things in the next row now. Then we can do rows. So this pipe operator is basically a set union. So columns is a set and rows is a set. So sorry, I can just do columns here. So we're unioning this column into calls to create the union of the two sets, basically adding the C into the column set. And we can do the same thing for the positive and negative diagonal. So pause, dags, union, the positive diagonal that we just created, and neg, diags, union, the negative diagonals. So after that, remember we need to restore the board so it's not a queen anymore. So other instances of the backtracking function can still use this grid. And after that, we can create our board. So our board is going to be all dots, basically n by n dot in a array. So board equals to dot for j in range n, because it's a string of all dots, and for i in range n. So after we created our board, we can call, call our backtracking function. So backtrack on board, starting from row zero, because we haven't covered any rows yet, and columns, diag positive diagonals, and negative diagonals are going to all be empty sets. So we can just do set, set, set. Now after that, we can just return our answer. So return. rows is not defined. Okay, we don't need to care about rows because we made sure that our row is unique. Because we're going down from top to bottom, so there's never any collisions. And I spelled something wrong. Oh, this is negative diag. Nice. So let's submit that. So this question is on the harder side, but we can still use the same backtracking approach, basically moving down one row at a time instead of one index at a time, like in the previous questions, and trying all the possibilities. So all the possibilities at every row is every column. So just like the letter combinations, every possibility is the, num the letters that match up with the number. So in this case, all the possibilities are the columns at every row. We're going to check that it satisfies the condition that no queens are attacking each other by storing where the previous queens have been 
their rows, their columns, their positive diagonals, and their negative diagonals. Then once we have that, we can set this grid spot to be a queen. We can call backtracking on this new grid and restore that to be a dot to be used for future backtracking instances. So after that, we can just call our backtracking function to populate answer for us and return our answer. So that's it for this question and that's it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you were able to learn something and I'll see you in the next video.